Hey creative friends, welcome to my channel. And this video is going to be a little bit different, but a little bit fun. So at this time last year, I'll put a link below in the description, but I did a video on how to make these little bowl cozies. Okay. These are the kind of thing that you put your, like if you're heating something up in a bowl in the microwave, you can set it in this and heat it and then hold it so that you, your hands don't get burnt by the hot bowl. Great. But what if you're holding something cold, like a pint of ice cream? What are you going to do? I usually used to put like a, a dish towel or paper towel around it because it gets cold on your fingers. So this video, I made one of these things and then Brian says, well, I want one too. So now I'm going to make a couple more and I'm going to show you how I did it. So what I'm going to create is not a bowl cozy. I'm going to show you how to make an ice cream pint cozy so that you can enjoy your ice cream and still keep your little fingers warm. So let's get started. All right, here, I, I've got all my supplies ready to go so I can just show you what I need. But before we even start, I need to tell you this most important and safety feature that you need to know. First of all, if you're making the bowl cozies, the, uh, the thing, the padding or the, um, the insert, the inside, has to be wrap and zap. Uh, this is kind of the batting that goes inside. And the reason that you use wrap and zap is because it is microwave safe. It is made to make things that go in the microwave. Like there's those, the, the, it features on the cover, um, one of the things that you put um, potatoes or vegetables in the microwave. In fact, I think I noticed this when I made the bowl cozies, that there's the rest, the uh, instructions right there for the baked potato zapper. Ooh, next on my list. I'm going to make that and I'll do a video for you. In fact, I'm going to leave this sitting on my table so that I don't forget. But this is what you're going to use for anything that goes in the microwave. Do not use just like anything else, like regular batting or, or maybe even sweet sweatshirt fabric or any, any of that because it can have polyester in it or you can have other fibers that actually can catch fire. So you want to make sure that you use wrap and zap if you're doing anything that goes in the microwave. But I'm hoping nobody out there is microwaving their ice cream because this is a great project that you can use up old, uh, old towels or even the larger uh, wash rags or just older sweatshirt fabric, anything that's just got a little bit of padding, little insulation to it. And so what you have to do, this is super simple. And um, I will put the link to the bowl cozies. You follow the same process, but I'll also list the measurements in the description uh, for you. So you need to have two pieces of fabric that are 10 by 10, 10 inch square fabrics for each bowl cozy or for each uh, pint cozy, you're going to need two. And I'm going to do coordinating fabrics just because I think that'll be fun. Then you need a piece of 10 by 10, maybe towel, washcloth, like I said, sweatshirt fabric, anything. You can use that. Now you could you also use felt or uh, flannel. If you use flannel, I would suggest having two layers. But either way, there you go. So that's what you're going to need. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to take one of these pieces of fabric, and they can both be the same. Mine are just um, coordinating because I like them that way. This has a little fold, so let me let me get that ironed out so that the edge is not curled in. Okay, perfect. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the fabric on the back of this one piece of um, fabric. There's that little towel. Okay, so we're going to make these little corners and they're super easy. Actually, yeah, this one is just cotton and it has um, a navy blue towel that I had. But what we're going to do is we're going to fold it with the, the pretty side or the, the right side together and we're going to fold it up in half. Okay, now on this half side, there's two measurements you need to know. Actually, for this, there's only three measurements you need to know. Ten inches, because your fabric needs to be ten inches squared. Two and a quarter and two and three quarter inches. That's all you need. So, on your little square that's folded now in half, you're going to measure two and a half inches up from the fold. And because this is on the inside, I'm using a Sharpie. I don't really care. So I'm going to put two and a half inches up from the fold on both sides. See this? Okay, on both sides. Now, 
we're going to do two and three quarter inches in the fold, in on the fold. So you're going to go on the, on the cut side, two and a quarter, and then in along the fold, two and three quarter. Then we're going to, and we're going to do this four times. So I'm going to show you then what's going to happen. Now I'm going to take a ruler and I'm going to connect those dots. And that's going to be my stitching line. Okay. So there's one. And I'm doing this also with Sharpie so that maybe you can see. And I'll, I'll bring it over so that you can really see how I've marked that. Okay. So you can see. See how I've marked those lines. Okay. So now what you could do is, let me get my pens. You could uh, go ahead and fold this the other way. Because you're going to have to do all four corners really. But what I like to do is go ahead and sew these two corners and then uh, come back and fold it the other way because you're going to then fold it this way, okay? But I just like to go ahead and sew each corner and then do the next one. So I'm going to go stitch right along there with a straight stitch on my machine right along those two red lines. Boop, boop, and then I will be back. Actually, you know what? I was going to do this. I went ahead, since I'm making two of them, I will go ahead and do this uh, the second time so that you can see it twice. Okay? Might as well. What the heck? All right, so this is the one I'm making for Brian because he likes wild, you know, bears and all that kind of stuff. So there I've got the right side down, fa the fancy side down. There's the back side of the fabric there, and I've got my lining, regardless of whatever it is, folded in half. I'm coming up along the cut side from the fold, two and a half inches. And you know, you know how I am. Nothing has to be like, this isn't like, these aren't the corners on a quilt. You don't have to worry if it's not exactly right. Okay, two and three quarter inches in from the open end in along the fold. Okay. And now we're going to connect those. And then I'll go ahead and stitch this one while I'm doing them and I can use this uh, sharpie because it's going to be inside so no one's going to see it so there okay now let me pin these and then I'll get these stitched and then I'll come back and we'll show you uh, how they are stitched all right now I'm going to stitch away and I like to give it a little back stitch. I like to get it started. Give it a little back stitch. Whoop. And then right there. So there's that. And then I'll do this corner. These are so quick and easy, and I remember I worked with a lady, Brie, if you're watching this, Brie, hey, hey, Brie, uh, she was going to make the bowl cozies for Christmas gifts for everybody, so maybe this year, Brie, you could make a matching ice cream pint cozies. Wouldn't that be fun? Okay, so there's those two. Let me do these. Um, so that would be kind of cool. I mean, these are kind of a fun little gift. And this is a good way, honestly, of using up scraps. If you've got a 10 inch square of fabric left from a project and maybe a piece of some sort of a, a, a batting or a you know, towel or whatever, you could use this. This would be a great way to use it up. I'm all about recycling stuff. If you can do that, that's a great thing. Okay. And then, I don't know how many of you name your sewing machines. If you do, tell me what the name of your sewing machine. This is Lagertha, because if you watched uh, Vikings, you will know that Lagertha was a Viking, and my sewing machine is a Viking. So <laughs> it's Viking, Husqvarna Viking. So I named it Lagertha. Okay, so I'm going to be back, and we'll show you how we uh, finish up the other corners. All right, now, so we've made that is what you got now. So now what you got to do is you got to kind of match up the center seam and those pin corners, see? You want to match that up. And then you're going to do the exact same thing on these corners. I just kind of fold that in so it lays a little bit flat. There you go. Make sure all of your, none of your fabric down in this crease. This is what, uh, one of the things is just run your finger along this inside edge right here because that will make sure 
that your uh, fabric doesn't pucker up in that corner and makes it weird. Okay, so now there's that. Remember, two and a half up from the fold. I'll show you here. Okay, two and a half up from the fold. Do you see that right there? And then two and three quarters in. Okay, there's that one. And then I'll let you see two and three quarters in from this side as well. And it feels like that's a small area right there. It needs to be because that's the area that you're going to, um, that's just a big round is the bottom of a pint. Okay, now side, I'm going to connect the lines. And then I'm going to pin that because these will flip a little bit more once that one corner here has been oh, sewn. You can line them up though. And these are so fun. They're so simple. And they're so clever. Like who doesn't like a pint of ice cream? Like that's a, a, a treat. But when you can eat it without your hands getting cold, that's an even bigger treat. All right, I'm going to mark the other one and then I'll come back. And I've got them all uh, marked and ready to get stitched. So we'll get all four of these done. Make sure those are all laying nice. Then what's going to happen is we're going to cut these corners off. Um, and then trim them down. And I'll show you how I trim them down. So that they don't get a little pucker in them. And it also just helps. These are a little bit of a, a difficult... Uh, when you turn them inside out or right side out, I'll show you. Um, they can be difficult, but you got to work on it. I'll show you. It's not hard. But the cool part about these is they don't take a whole lot of sewing skill. You need to be able to measure, cut, and sew a straight stitch. So you could technically make these by hand if you wanted to. No fancy stitching here, but I wouldn't. All right. Perfect, All right? Last corner. And then what we're going to do is go back and do this to the other two plain pieces of fabric that don't have this uh, insulation piece on there. So let me get that done and I'll show you. All right. All right, here's what you have. You've got your, see, you can see the shape of it. See there? You see inside? It's kind of like that. Perfect, right? But we have to do the outside piece of fabric as well. But really quick, I'm going to show you. You need to cut this corner off. So I like to just kind of open it out like that and stand it up. Make sure everything's stitched correctly. Because if it's not, it'll sit lopsided or it won't stand up correctly. So I give it a little test. And then I do this. And now, another thing I'm going to do is... So you see how there's four layers there? I like to make that kind of as uh, thin as possible. So I'll go back and these, these uh, towel layers, I will trim them off even closer. Now you can trim them really close like that. I have a pair of these, they're applique scissors. I like to use them for that because they kind of scooch along and then you can stitch, you can uh, cut right close to that stitching line. So I like that, so. See how close? That's just going to help it from being so bulky when you go to turn it right side out. So I'm going to trim these up, and then I'm going to come back, and we will we will uh, measure out and stitch the other piece of fabric and put them all together. All right, I want to show you something I found out. This is not the end of the world. It will not ruin your project. But I noticed when I was cutting these, you can see how this has the two lines of fabric. See, there's the towel, and then there's these two lines that go all the way down to that fold right there. You see that? This one, you can see that there's a little pucker in there. See that little pucker? I don't know if you can see that, but see how it came up and it kind of puckered down? That's okay. I mean, you don't want that to happen, but if it happens, don't take everything apart and start over. You won't even notice it. I mean, you kind of might, but it's not that big a deal in there, okay? So if you're a perfectionist, take it apart. If you're just using these at home and you don't really worry about it, then don't worry about it. All right now I've got these other two pieces of fabric and we're going to do exactly the same thing with those. We're going to fold them in half and we're going to measure up two and a quarter from the fold. Or yeah, two and a quarter, two and a half, sorry, two and a half. Did I have been saying two and a quarter? 
I'm so sorry. It's two and a half and then two and three quarters. Oh my gosh. I don't want to have to go back and redo my whole video. So just remember, two and a half up the side, two and three quarters along the fold. If I said two and a quarter anywhere, disregard it. Okay, so there's that. I'm going to sew along that. Do, 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 do. Right there. You probably can't see now my hand's in the way. Okay, we're going to go from that point to that point. And we're going to stitch along there. And then I'm going to do the other one to this piece. And then I will stitch them all up. And I'm going to do all four just like I did for this, okay? I'm going to do the two. And then I'm going to come back and do the other two. And then we will come back. I have these uh, each of these four little corners stitched. Now I'll stand these up. Yeah, it looks good. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and I'm going to snip off these corners for you. So I'll go do that. And I'm just going to do it kind of close to the seam, about a quarter of an inch. And because there is no uh, interfacing, no padding basically, I don't have to clean this up. So I'm just going to go snip those and then I'll be back. I've got all the little ears cleaned off there. Let me get that little piece of string. So uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this so that the right side is out. So you see how that looks? Kind of cute, huh? And then I'm going to match it up inside of this. So now I've got to, I'm going to trim off a couple of those little pieces. Okay, good. Um, so now, see how that is? I'm going to put this one inside of that one, right sides together, and match up those seams along there. I'm going to do this to both of them. So it's like a little a little fabric kind of a bucket there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that the seams match up nicely so you can kind of see the seams matching up there and it kind of helps place them. There you go. Stitch that one over there. Kind of pull and make sure all four of the seams match up. And then I'm going to pin them I'm going to pin them around the top. And then what's going to happen is we're going to stitch all the way along the top. But we're going to leave like one and a half inches on the side. So from like there to there. And the way I designate that is to make sure, first of all, I'm going to line everything up and make sure all the pieces match up nicely. And then what I'll do, I'm going to go do that. So see all, all the edges are nice. And then the way I do it is I will put two pins right here because I know I'm going to stop there. I'll start like right here where two pins are. It's going to, it's kind of difficult to turn it right side out, but it'll be fine. So that's what I do is I mark it with double pins. That way I remember I'll start here and that, that way I remember to stop. Otherwise, I'll just go ahead and sew around the whole thing. So I'm going to go ahead and get these uh, pinned. And then I'll come back and we'll do the final stitching. So this is basically what you should have. And you should have the uh, batting on the outside and then your other pieces right sides together pinned around the top. Now I'm going to take them over and I'm going to stitch those. And so let's get to the machine and get that done. So I've got about a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And one of the things I wanted to point out is to make sure that when you come around you really pull flat where that seam is so that uh, it doesn't pucker underneath there. So I'm going to give that a little pucker prevention by pulling it nice and flat, going in there at a quarter of an inch, leave my needle down, spin her around, and keep going all the way around. So let me get both of these done, and then I will come back to you. Same thing up here. You put your needle in, spin, oops. Go down, spin it around. There we go. Oh, I can maybe we'll make one more stitch now. There we go. There we are. All right, so we're going to keep going around, and then I'll come back when I'm done with both of them. I've got them both done, and now what I do is I go ahead and I set them, make sure that they set right and that everything. I want to look in here and make sure none of these slipped or folded over, and some of them will slide a little, so I'm just going to trim that up a bit. And now we're going to go to where we turn them right side out. That takes a little bit of work. But I'm also probably going to trim the little corners so a bit. And then if you're afraid that it's going to be uh, too bulky on the seams here, you could also 
trim off this excess right here, which I might go ahead and do a little bit of that, trimming some of this excess uh, toweling or batting or whatever you have. Might trim that down a little bit just to help those edges along there um, fold over a little bit better. So I'm going to do a little trimming and then I'll come back and show you what I trimmed and then we'll turn it right side out. Now I've got them all cleaned up around the edges. Now I'm going to find the little opening and I'm going to go between the two pieces of cotton fabric and start turning it. Now this is going to take a little bit because that's a tiny little hole, but it will work out. Um, some people, you know, you could use like a chopstick. I have actually one of these little doodads. I've got a couple of those. And if you get to a point, you can kind of push it up in there to help. Um, and so we're just going to sit here and just keep working this thing. And I will eventually get these turned right side out. Now you can see I've got that out and it does take a little work and that's one of the things I want to remind you on either side of your uh, your little hole that you leave to turn it out you want to make sure that you backstitch there a couple times because it uh, can put a little pressure on that. So now I take my little pokey thing you can use a pencil or a tooth or a um, chopstick and just go and poke the corners out. You want to make sure those corners, that's why I trim those corners, because see how nice and sharp that makes them? If you don't trim them, they're kind of bulky, and they don't get that nice point. But when you're doing this, there's this point that you reach. You're about ready to give up, and all of a sudden, you get just enough through the hole that the rest of it just kind of follows suit. So don't give up. It does. That's the worst part of making these, is turning them right side out. So now I'm just going to poke those little corners out. And then I'm going to go do the other one. And then I'm going to touch them with my iron. Give them a little press on the inside, around the edges like that. And then we'll go and we'll stitch around the outside edge. So let me get the other one turned right side out. And then I will be back. Now this looks pretty rough. When you're first done turning it inside out, it kind of looks all wrinkled and icky. And you can see the hole where you turned it inside out. But what you got to do is, oh, I forgot to poke this corner out. Um, make sure your corners are all poked out nice. Get that corner poked out there. And now you kind of put your hand in and force everything nice, like pull the, pull the little edges here. Get it all down in there nice. And then another thing is to pull these uh, where the seams meet. Give them a nice little pull so that they lay nicely together. Kind of pull that like that, that one, that one. Then we're going to go in with the iron and iron down inside in each of the four sections. And that one little bit that you opened up that's open, you want to turn that in on itself like I've done here and pin it. So you're going to turn it in and fold it down here so that it's folded in there nice. There you go and then iron it nice and flat like that and then pin it because then what's going to happen is we're going to stitch all the way around the edges. And now I'm going to go around and I'm going to catch, start at this little corner right here and catch right there where that uh, pin is holding it and I'm going the very smallest little seam allowance I can imagine. Make sure I backspace there. There we go. Pull that needle out, or that pin, and now we're going to go along, and when you come to those uh, seams, just kind of pull everything nice and flat, and then we're going to go all the way around the top of this, and so when I get both of these done, I will show you our finished ice cream pint cozies. All right, we're all stitched around the edges, and there, look at this, also if you use two different kinds of fabric, it could be reversible. And so there you have it, your pint ice cream cozy. Um, you know what's making me think? We had a super big, super late lunch. Maybe ice cream is what's for dinner. <laughs> Who knows? Either way, I hope you guys give this a try. It's kind of a fun thing to go along with your um, microwave bowl cozy. If you've got pint ice cream and you want something to hold it with kind of while you're eating it so your fingers don't get cold. 
Well, I hope you enjoyed it, and as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.